If you have an Umbraco website, trust me, you'll want to be using Umbraco 13. However, there is a catch, and that is Umbraco 13 is the first version of Umbraco that supports deleting your startup.cs. So all this means is that when you want to undertake a V13 upgrade yourself, not only do you need to worry about NuGet and fixing and breaking changes in your code base, you also need to worry about how to refactor your program.cs so it's easy to update in the future. And that's the reason in this video, I'm going to walk you through how I undertook that process myself on johndjones.com. So I upgraded it from Umbraco V12 to V13. And in the first part of this video, I'm just going to concentrate on the Umbraco upgrading goodness. And in the second part, we're going to look at how we can delete that pesky startup.cs. Right, so first things first, before you can get going installing Umbraco 13, you need to make sure that you have .NET 8 downloaded and installed. You also need to make sure that you have Visual Studio 17.8 installed as well. So I'm assuming you've done that. Now the next step is to open up your solution within Visual Studio, and then you need to set each of your class libraries and projects to use .NET 8. So we do this by clicking on our project, going to properties, Within the general tab here, you can see we've got this target framework, set this to .NET 8. Click save, and then I need to go through and do exactly the same for each and every one of my class libraries. So with that done, the next step is to upgrade your NuGet packages. And there's typically two different types of upgrades you need to do. First, you need to make sure that all your .NET stuff is using .NET 8. And secondly, you need to upgrade all your Umbraco stuff to use Umbraco v13. Now, for most viewers, if you're just working with a web application, upgrading your packages should be pretty standard. However, if like me, you've got multiple libraries and they reference each other, then upgrading your solution might feel like playing dependency Jenga because you try and upgrade something and it fails and so then you have to try something else. So let's see this in action. If I right click on my solution, go to manage new get packages for solution. If I go to the updates tab here, let's say that I go to the Umbraco CMS web website package. If I click install, you'll see here that I've got an error and my error reads detected package downgrade CMS blah, blah, blah from 303 reference the package from the project, blah, blah, blah. Now, if you do bump into these types of errors, don't fret because this is to be expected. Now, sadly, because every website is different, everyone's using slightly different packages and different versions. There's no silver bullet that I can just show you now that's going to work for every single viewer out there. Instead, all you have to do is basically upgrade things until you find the right order and everything eventually upgrades. Now, for me, typically, I'll start with the .NET stuff, making sure that everything's upgraded to .NET 8. Then I'll look at the Umbraco stuff. So for this project, this means that I'm going to start by upgrading my Microsoft dot stuff. So let's install this and make sure that it gets upgraded. No errors. Perfect. Then we're going to go to my extensions configuration, upgrade this to V8. Perfect. No errors. Then we're going to go to extensions configuration, JSON, upgrade this. Perfect. Then I'm going to go to my system configuration, configuration manager, eight boom then i'm going to go to my system service model syndication boom upgrade that now i'm ready to upgrade my umbraco stuff so typically when i start upgrading umbraco i'll start by upgrading the cms web website the common or the infrastructure projects clicking on that no that one doesn't work so instead i need to go to say common click on that nope that does not work let's go to web website click on that that does not work let's go to cms core click on that yep that's worked okay now i need to go to infrastructure let's try that click okay yep this is upgraded this time then i need to go to say cms web website this is now upgraded nope that hasn't upgraded so now I need to potentially go to web common, upgrade this, click accept, that's upgraded, 
And then I think finally I can do my Umbraco CMS web website. Now I can upgrade that and it's upgraded. So hopefully that just highlights the trial and error nature of trying to bump your packages. Now, once you've got everything upgraded, the next thing you want to do is build things. And this is where you might bump into breaking changes and obsolete code. So jumping back to our solution after doing this, when I click build, if you're lucky, your project's going to build OK. But what's probably going to happen is you're going to see a bunch of errors like this. So in my example, I've got binary formatter is obsolete. And if you see errors that say is obsolete, this is typically because of a breaking change in Umbraco or an unbreaking change within the .NET framework. Now, if I click on this, you can see that this file helper here has got this obsolete binary formatting method. Now, my first tip when it comes to fixing breaking changes is a key one, and that is make sure that the code you're trying to fix is actually used. Because if you see here, file helper has zero references, and because I've upgraded this already, I know that this bit of code is no longer used. So instead of trying to fix code that's not used, just delete it and it's going to make your life much easier. Now, obviously, the things that you're going to need to fix is going to be dependent on your code base. But two things which are worth pointing out is that if you go to the fundamental setup upgrading version specific page on umbraco.com, you'll see that there's this version specific upgrade. And in here, you can see all the different breaking changes for all the different versions of Umbraco. So come in here because you might find some tips to help you upgrade your breaking changes. Also, if you go over to the Microsoft MSDN site, you can see that they've also got a similar breaking changes in .NET page. And from here, you can see that we've got all the different breaking changes in 8, 7, 6 and 5. So if you get really stuck, I recommend looking at these two pages because they can be great sources of reference. With the code base compiling OK, the next step is to upgrade the database. So all we need to do is launch our site in Chrome and then we'll upgrade the database using the upgrade wizard. So hopefully on a first launch, what should happen is your site should load and you should see this website is under maintenance. So this is fine. All we need to do is go to slash Umbraco. You can see here that we've got a brand new page and I'll need to log in. After you log in, you should see the upgrade assistant. All you need to do is click on this continue button and it should probably take about two to three seconds the Umbraco backend should load and we've now successfully upgraded our website. Now, before you just try and test that your web pages are working, what I recommend you do is go to settings. Then within settings, go to examine management. Within examine management, go to your external index, scroll to the bottom and click on rebuild index. Then we go back to overview. Then we're going to go to our internal index. Go to the rebuild index again, click on that button, boom. Then if we go to the published status, we can refresh our status. We can reload the memory cache. We can reload the database cache and I can do this internals. We probably don't need to do that. But if we click all of that, hopefully we can see everything is now green. Now, another useful thing to do at this point is to run the health check. So click on health check here, click on check all groups and you should see if things are configured correctly or not. So I know there's a few bits in my app settings I need to update, but I won't look at that now. Now, before we launch our page, it's also worth pointing out that don't forget you have a log view in here. So if you click on this, you should see if your application is throwing any errors. Now, if I take my URL and I try and load my home page, hopefully if things go well, I should see a page. However, as you can see, HTTP 500 error. So going back into my log viewer, if I click on this, you can see that I've got a unhandled exception was thrown. And if I click on this, I can see that within my code, I've got the navigation service, get primary menu from tree, and this get by X path is throwing an error. So jumping us to the problematic area of code in Visual Studio, Straight away, I can see this green line. And if I click on it, it says get by X path is obsolete. It's basically suboptimal and use something else. So what I need to do is replace this bit of code with a more modern V13 supported syntax. 
and these types of issues are going to be pretty common when you upgrade so even though your project compiles don't be surprised if you find these types of issues so for me to replace this code all i need to do is do var content type and i can do content get by content type pass in my alias then i can just do content get by content type pass in my content type and this bit of code is now doing exactly the same thing as the previous bit of code however i don't have any warnings and if i launch my site what should hopefully happen now is that my web page should load boom so we've now done the bulk of our upgrade however one cool feature of Embraco v13 is that it finally supports a program.cs only configuration now as part of dotnet 6 we basically deleted startup.cs however Embraco has never really supported this until now so for the remainder of the video, we're now going to look at probably the more complicated bit of how we can delete our startup.cs so we just have a nice program.cs left over. So jumping us over to my existing program.cs, let's have a quick peek at how it's structured. So the application is being bootstrapped with this line, host.create default builder. Underneath this, you can see that we've got these three extension methods. So we've got configure and braco defaults, I'm configuring some logging framework stuff and then I'm registering a few different app settings within app configuration. And then finally, within configure web host defaults, I'm calling my startup.cs and then right at the bottom, we're launching the application with builder.build and host.one. So switching over to the startup.cs, you can see that we've got constructor and we're passing in two arguments here and we'll come back to this later. And then in startup.cs, we've basically got two methods. So the first method is called configure services. It's got an iService collection. And within here, we're going to register dependencies and all that kind of jazz. Now, the second method is called configure. And this is where we're adding stuff to our pipeline. And this is typically the stuff that we've registered here. We're then going to configure it and add it into the pipeline using middleware here. So hopefully that should set some expectations about what your program.cs will look like in Umbraco v12 and below. Now let's quickly jump into an Umbraco 13 program.cs so we can think about what we need to move towards. So on the screen, you can see the program.cs that's generated when you run the default Umbraco v13 template. And as you'll see, it's much more easy to understand what's going on here. So at the top, we've got this web application create builder. So we're bootstrapping our application. Underneath here, we've got this create and Braco builder. So if we switch back to my old website, you'll see that we've got in configure services, the exact like for like here. So this isn't new. Now underneath here, we're doing our web app app builder, which we have in the existing one. However, one really important thing to note here is that we've got this await app dot boot and Braco async. And this thing is new to V13. And this bit of code here, if you're upgrading won't exist in your existing website so you need to make sure that you add this existing bit of code now underneath here you can see we've got this use umbraco bit and if i jump back to my existing site if i go to configure you'll see that in configure i've got a like for like in here right down the bottom so this is not new and then eventually we're running our application with this app dot run async now jumping us into the future quickly it's probably worth showing you what happens if you forget to add this line so if i try and bootstrap my application now you'll see that my web page should load however i'm going to get an error so there's my nice web page however if i go back here what should happen is i've got this error and you can see there's this umbraco cms core exception boot failed exception so the runtime level is unknown please make sure await app boot umbraco async is added just after web application app equals builder dot build so as you've seen if you do forget to add that boot umbraco call you do get a useful error message however you won't be able to upgrade until you add it so don't forget your little tinker so let's jump back to the challenge of refactoring our code now Depending on how complex your site is, your startup.cs might be tiny or like mine, it could be fairly big. 
Now, one of the issues of just refactoring everything into your program.cs is you can see here that I've got 120 line startup. And if I go to my program.cs, this is also 30. So having a class that contains you know, 200 lines isn't ideal by any standard. So what I recommend is that even though we can get rid of our startup.cs, you refactor your code in a way to keep it lean and mean. Now, the way that I like to refactor my code is that because we've got two different methods in our startup.cs, we'll basically copy all the code in each method into a separate class. So the approach that I favor to solve this dilemma is to go into my solution explorer and then create a folder called startup. Now within startup, I'm going to create two different classes and you can name this wherever you want to by call mine services initializer and the other one middleware initializer. So service initializer, we're basically going to copy all the code in configure services into there and middleware initializer, we're going to get all the code which is within this configure method and we're going to copy it. Now, if we look at my original startup.cs, you'll see that within my constructor, I'm passing in the iWebhost environment and iConfiguration. And if I look within either one of my initializers, you'll see that I'm passing in both of these parameters. So nothing's really changing there. Now, in order to keep my program.cs lean, I favor creating an extension method here. And typically, I just don't really like extension methods, but here I think it works quite well. So for my services one, I'm going to do a register application services, and it's going to take in a this web application builder. And this is going to be a public static partial class of service initializer. Now for my middleware initializer, again, this is going to be a public static class, and it's going to be a middleware initializer. And this is also an extension method. So we're going to call it configure middleware. It's this web application app and then it's passing in the host environment and the configuration manager. So just in case anyone's still struggling to understand why I favor this approach, I've jumped us into the future and this is the end program.cs and you can see how much cleaner it will look. So I've got a bunch of code and we'll cover this shortly. But if I go under here, you can see I've got this builder.register application services. I'm passing in my config here. Then underneath, I've got my app builder and I've got my configure middleware. So these two lines are much easier and cleaner to read than actually having to call a different helper method or just adding the code within our program.cs. And you can see that doing this, even though I've added way more code into program.cs, it's only increased about 15 lines in code overall. So I really recommend that you favor this technique if you've got a really big startup.cs. So then jumping us back to our startup.cs, all I need to do is copy everything in configure services and then paste it over into my service initializer. So you can see here that all I need to do is overwrite all of this stuff. I'm going to get an error here. So I basically need to copy my builder object I'm passing in and I do builder and then dot services then I just need to add in all these extensions and then it's just basically a case of converting this converting this converting this then I just need to add in a reference and then off I go so after you successfully copied configure services next turn your attention to the configure method and move that over to the middleware initializer so all I need to do again in configure is copy all of the code up to there. So now it's all empty. Go back to my middleware initializer, paste the code in there, fix any issues, click save and off we go. So with our refactorings done, if I jump back to startup.cs, you should see that my one is now completely empty. So we're in a situation where we can comment this out. So this means that the last bit we need to think about is how do we refactor program.cs so that it works using our new code. Now straight away, you'll see that we'll need to delete this configure web host defaults. However, we've got another challenge. Okay, so if we look at a vanilla Umbraco 13 program.cs, you can see that it's being bootstrapped from web builder. Now, if you jump to my solution, you can see that I decided to use host.create default builder instead. Now, if you're using a website or web application, then the web 
application.createBuilder probably makes more sense. So just in case you weren't aware, host.createBuilder can be used to basically bootstrap any type of .NET application. So this includes, you know, APIs, web application services, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the reason why I chose host originally is basically because my site is really old. I think it's about seven or eight years old. I built it originally on .NET 4 and Umbraco 7, and I've upgraded it to each major version of Umbraco ever since. Now, at the time when I upgraded my site from v8 framework to v9.net, it made more sense to use the host builder because there were some limitations around caching. I needed to hack the pipeline a little bit in order to make sure my site worked quickly. Now, those type of restrictions, they're not really relevant anymore. And because all the sample code on Umbraco uses web application, every online uses the web application stuff. And because I do a bunch of videos, which meant to be easy for you to understand, it makes sense for me to convert my site to use web application instead. So this upgrade step isn't going to be relevant for everyone. If you're using web application, you can skip this advice. If you're using host.create default builder, you don't need to swap. However, it's probably going to make your life a little bit easier if you do. Now, when it comes to refactoring this, I can probably get rid of the Umbraco defaults. I can get rid of my logging thing. So the only bit that I actually need to refactor is basically this app configuration part. So this is the reason why, in my instance, it made more sense for me to come over, copy the vanilla configuration that you use on an Umbraco 13 site, and then come back in here. And then all I need to do is add this in here. And then basically the only thing that I really need to migrate now is this line here. Let's say I delete this, delete the bottom bit. If I go to the top here, you can see that all I need to do is change all of this and register it with this builder. So before we do this final refactor, let's quickly tidy things up. So let's move the call to environment at the top. Paste all these lines here. Let's just get rid of that. Now, all I need to do is just do a builder. And then the like for like here is to do configuration. So that should hopefully get rid of the warning. Now I just need to do the same for this line, this line, and this line. This is missing something. So let's just add that in. And now we've got a working.program.cs. So the only thing left over is that we now need to make our call back to our startup stuff. So remember, we've got our service initializer and middleware initializer. So the service initializer works on the builder object. So we need to do register services. And then within here, we now need to pass in my env and my config. So if I quickly copy in this code, you can see that we can get access to environment and configuration that we were using historically within startup.cs, doing builder.environment and builder.configuration. So now if I go back to my line here, you can see I just pass in my env and my conf. I then need to add in the middleware call and we do this on app. After we do the app.boot umbraco async, remember make sure you add this line. I can do an app.configure middleware and then again I just need to pass in my env and my conf. Off we go. You can see that I've got no errors here. Jumping back to Solution Explorer, now let's delete my startup because mm. I'm feeling brave. And then if I debug my website. Hopefully this should now load without any errors. Okay, so in my haste to get everything up and running, I forgot something. So when I was booting my application, we can see we've got this invalid operation scheme already exists in Braco back office. And that is because as a Wally, I told you to copy everything from startup.cs into here. This Umbraco services add Umbraco section here this is now duplicated, so I need to delete this. And basically, you just want to make sure that everything within this register application services, it's unique and not duplicated. Now, if I relaunch my website, hopefully this should now load without an error whatsoever. And as we can see, it has. And now the final thing to do is take your code, deploy it into production, and jobs are good and you can enjoy the goodness of Umbraco 13. Well, let me know in the comments below if you've enjoyed this video. 
This is the start of a slight mini series on Umbraco V13. So if you haven't already, don't forget to smash on the subscribe button. Also, it is the new year, so click on the like button. Give me some motivation for creating some more videos. Finally, if you just need to know a little bit more about Umbraco 13, then on the screen right now is a link to my video that goes over Umbraco 13, all the new features, what you can expect, what it gives you. Check that out. Otherwise, until next Sunday, happy coding.